balasnya kalapun balasnya balasnya nanan is dima espen di i di i na n e And what about the bar? to And I one dance. I Where I When I I become that. I can speak, but I cannot speak again. I can hear, but I cannot hear. I can hear. So I cannot hear this. I cannot hear this. This is what this is what I have need to see the affection from the eggs of Yes, I do. I cannot hear, but where I am, cause I can hear. I cannot hear, far, but I can hear that. It's my church. We have met a man that that second to us in our church, the first church. Lagos State. Okay. As an inverted tongue, I see the low bed and am the I'm sorry. And I'm thin with other disease. But let and the compassion is in my heart, in God, and what is healthy? Yes, I had it. It looks me to make it. What are you talking? Help out me. And what I am, what I am, I do. My blood, I am being falling, falling, the body is in. And I collect medicine, the God, I think of my blood, my blood is the telling me that it is good. I do do now, Osaka. I very to to pizza people. Bad cause that.
Silent voices could not have come at a better time in history, especially for a time like this in our nation. With a population of over 200 million people, or more than 1% of them actually having hearing disabilities or hearing impairment, it is such a critical moment for us to actually bridge the gap between the hearing and the hard of hearing, or between the hearing and those who have hearing disabilities or hearing difficulties. Lagos has about about 10% uh, of, of you know of her population, right, um, that are deaf. Yet not so much is being done or said about you know integrating this community effectively, you know, in the society. I mean, you go you go to the banks, you see you know rams that take care of you know some particular you know that takes care of people with you know physical disabilities. But then when you go to the when you go to when you get to the counters, right, for someone who has you know a hearing impairment, is there someone who can you know Know, interact or communicate with them right using sign language okay I mean is there someone who goes to, I mean when you go to the hospital is there someone who can you know interact with you know someone with a hearing impairment right uh, you know effectively you know at the reception or even at the point of you know rendering medical consultations so these are the physical gaps we have seen and we I mean that that led to us um, taking this you know project up I am delighted to embark on this project with my alongside my team members the civil liberty team of the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative we started and the goal was that we want to teach people how to learn we want to teach people sign language we want an an inclusive environment for people where when anyone comes into an organization they will be able to access sign language at least if a deaf person comes into an organization they'll be able to communicate the basic sign language so um civil liberty talks about you know inclusion it talks about you know civil rights it talks about so many things you know that enables you know the citizen to be able to live you know to their full potential in any community that they live in Right, and also participate in society. So, um, but when we looked at this, I mean, the, the particular community that fitted into our program interest was the deaf community in Lagos. Um, this project is something that uh, is very, very, very crucial because we are trying to bridge the gap, the gap between the deaf and the hearing by providing trainings to um, several people youth leaders, CSO, who can go back to their community to teach people sign language. We provided them with basic sign language skills. When we, when we conceptualize this project about you know, bridging the communication gap between the deaf and um, those who can hear in Lagos State, yeah, it wasn't really a smooth journey. Uh, we had some challenges, but um, it's interesting to know that when we started, yeah, we started with um, a, a, an interdialogue. Um, we started with an interdialogue uh, meeting where we had people from the civil society organizations. You know, we had youth leaders, government officials. Um, we had the general manager of um, the Lagos State um, Office of Disability Affairs. You know, present, um, and we had this in partnership with um, the American Corner uh, that Ikeja um, um, who hosted us. And you know, it was a, it was a very very great session. You know, where we had conversations from how technology can help to drive um, social inclusion for the deaf people, and we're also able to build you know conversations with the deaf people. Also, the association of deaf people were present at that particular dialogue. So it was like um, an interface between those who can hear and those who can't hear, and how. Uh, we can better work for social interaction and social integration. So we're also pushing for advocacy of the deaf inclusion into various organizations whereby we can have at least one person in each organization talk to um, who will be able to address a deaf person or a or a person who could not even who could not even communicate or so it's just basically to teach them how to be able to communicate better with the deaf community so they don't feel left out. So, so far so good, we have been able to, you know, train about 500 people. That was, I mean, that was mind-blowing. We never saw it coming, right? Um, and the, the impact has been endless, right? So we've seen um, mothers who have, you know, cascaded this training to their children. We've seen 
you know wives you know incorporating or you know their their, their husbands into the, into the training them you know themselves and then you know the same way you know husbands doing the same thing for their wives so it's been a community response some sort of communal response right to this uh to the to the project you know goal and interest So I'm Speaking Fingers Treasures, lead facilitator of um, Life Work Ready program for deaf adolescents and young people in Nigeria. My name is Ahazli Keliva Chibike. Okay, uh, my name is Kelumi Olayomo. My name is Kate. Yes, yeah, that's my name. So uh, I finally got that name today by uh, one of our participants here. And uh, yeah, my name is Kedu, and I work with Takeos of Men in Africa Initiative, a women's human rights organization here in Lagos. My name is Ife Imwa, Mrs. Ife Imwa in Lake My name is Tosiani Ramo. So I signed Tosin. I work with Center for Citizens with Disabilities. My name is Olorun Dikme Adwala. I'm a client representative working as women advocates. Research and Documentation Center, what C. I am a relative of Salami. I basically from Lagos Island Institute. Okay, so I'm Ruth Otori and I'm a programs officer with the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Seram. Uh, I've been learning sign language for about seven years ago, but because of one engagement or the other, I dropped. So, but now hearing of this opportunity is just a way to also start my passion because sometimes I'm passionate about so. It's just a way to just restart the course and get better at it. I was excited first because it was going to be an opportunity for me to refresh my knowledge of sign language, but most importantly that I could get back to class where I could also learn, learn better and be, and also go back and practicalize new learning opportunities that um, is provided me. Uh, I have a principle of constant and never-ending improvement. So for me, it's a continuous, it's a continuous learning uh, process for me. So I keep learning because the more you learn, the better you become. And um, for this space, there's a, there's a tendency for somebody to become dusted or rusty. So, and I wouldn't want to do that. I like delivering fresh at every time that I show up. I work with children, first of all. And sometimes there are cases where you have a child who is deaf, who is deaf, and the parent hides the child from coming out. So, because um, basically the animators don't sign. So when I heard about this, it was, it, it, it was like an opportunity for me to encourage the parent not to stop hiding that child like if the child is in our midst i could talk to the child so that was my first inspiration that particular child inspired me to want to be part of this i just want to explore and just want to learn another language and also be good at it and also if possible to be an interpreter in the future to come so that is the aim and I actually love what I'm doing here. Well, it's been exciting, it's been fun, it's been a very, very educative. Like, I've really learned a lot. Like, I can even, it's as good as I can communicate a bit, which I don't even know about before the training. But after the training, I've seen some improvements and it's been okay. And the teachers have also been very comfortable, exciting, and very, very educative. So um, at first when the training came up and I was invited, I felt a bit reluctant to want to participate because usually we would um, recruit somebody during our advocacy initiatives to um, interpret for us, I mean interpret into sign language for us. But since um, I've been having this training, my perspective changed entirely. So I saw the need 
for, for sign language to be adopted in every organization for effectiveness and also for um, this the, the deaf community not to feel left out. Since it's a language, it's a language of communication, we need to communicate with people. And then this category of people find a way to communicate with us. I think we should also go a step further into learning to communicate with them. So um, as a CSO person, I think it is very important, especially um, as regarding um, stakeholder management. So these are very vital part of the kind of work that we do. We invite um, uh, the deaf, the dumb to our events, and then how do we manage them? It means probably we've not been very sensitive in managing them. So now that I understand how important this is, what I didn't understand before, but now I understand even better. So it has given me the is it um, the hindsight to want to um, learn this, encourage my colleagues to learn this language so that we can manage this category of stakeholder even more eff effectively, ensuring that nobody feels um, left out, nobody feels um, discriminated against, everybody feels like a human being in advocacy programs. So basically, I think it has been a very um, good initiative and eye-opening eye one um, at that. I have interest in having this knowledge because of effective communication skills. And I'm a mobilizer, I'm a community mobilizer. I love, I'm so passionate about our community. So I believe bridging the gaps about communications, about deaf community can be an added skills to my community. When I first heard uh, about the training, I was so excited to join the training because uh, I've been looking forward to uh, have uh, such forum. In fact, even before this time, uh, you know, I've even been going online asking people around if uh, uh, they know about any organization that trains people on sign language or any any school of sign language so that I can join. So, but luckily for me, I uh, was uh, among the people that uh, got wind of this uh, particular training. So I decided to join. And the reason why I decided to join is because, uh, because of the kind of work I do, you know, we are always in the field, you know, uh, looking out, I mean, um, um, dealing with female victims of violence, be it domestic violence or um, any kind of violence, and especially women, when I mean, yeah, female victims of violence, you know. So when you go to the field, you meet, all kinds of people. Some of them are deaf, and communicating with them has been an issue. So, hence, I look forward to this kind of a, a training. So, immediately I saw this kind of training, I took advantage of it. I actually signed up for the training because of my organization, Brace of the Young, where I work, and we are diversifying into working with people with disability. And there is need for us to get trained there is need for us to get trained and uh, understand the disability world, what it feels like. And when this opportunity ca came, I quickly grabbed it and it has been a wonderful one learning so far about the deaf community. It's an area I have personally not delved into it before, but so far so good. I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Thank you. It has been a very good one because there are some words I didn't know, but now I'm getting better than having the opportunity to interact with a deaf person makes it good for me. Yes, I would actually recommend others to learn sign language because that is what is called inclusion, the ability to bridge the communication gap between the people, the persons without disabilities and persons with disabilities. So it's just inclusion and it's needed. It's been interesting, interesting because most times when we sign here, we laugh about it. But I found out that I can actually do a lot than I thought. For instance, today we had, uh, we had um, someone in our midst who we could sign with. And it's amazing that I could actually talk to her a bit, although not as fluent as I would want. So, but I was able to talk to her, say some certain things to her. So it's been amazing, it's been interesting, and I hope to keep coming so that I can be
be better at it. Prayer the training has been a good one for me. Even at home now, people started asking me that I haven't turned to, to a deaf person because I practice consistently. Like even without seeing anybody, I make sure that I sign. And when I started, I didn't even know about signing language at all. Because so basically, my organization, we actually have a deaf and dumb person here. And since um, the training, I've been able to interact more with her. Like now, even most of um, the staffs here would literally come to me when they want to communicate with her to help tell me to help them communicate with her because they find it more easy and it, there's now an easy type of communication between the both of us. So that has really stand out for me. From my experience, before I started, I was thinking going to be very hard, going to be very difficult to learn. But as we proceed, it's, it's, it's very, very easy. Like very, very. As it's something that you are already familiar with, just for you to be able to know how to do it best. best. I don't have any power experience about sign language. But I believe by now I have, I've learned new things and I'm very, very passionate about learning more about sign language. It's always about like just gestures, not really effective communications. When I heard about this, it was a very, very lifetime opportunity because I always like to learn new things, passionate about new things. So hearing about sign language skills, I was very, very passionate and picked it up at a good. So far, so good. The experience has been so wonderful and enriching. The training has been so perfect and excellent. Thanks to the organizers of this training. Okay, the experience has been so wonderful. And especially, I'm very opportune to be among the people that are uh, on site here at the training so um, the experience has been so wonderful and uh, a kind of uh, 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 hands on deck you know practicalizing uh, all of the training that we have been going through so it's a very wonderful experience and uh, i look forward to complete it ha, it's been enriching enriching in the sense that i've had to learn we learn ways of signing new words. I met new sets of people. And the fact that um, this is a project that is going to be reaching out to more um, is, is practical in the sense that like we had today, the deaf actually coming into the class to ensure that we practicalize what it is that we are learning. I think the training has been very, very impactful because um, seeing different people having interest in this course has always probably influenced me to want to learn it. You know, people being excited, learning a language that is not popular, that has somewhat influenced me to also want to take this a step forward. So even learn it outside the duration of this particular training, because it's not something you learn and you know at once. So I'm encouraged, I'm influenced, I'm motivated to want to learn it the more so that I can I can know it like I know and understand um, English language like I'm communicating now. So I like to learn it up to that extent. I've been influenced so much like that. So I like to learn it, um, use it to communicate with these people and probably like just be more familiar and understand them the more, you know? Because usually, whether passively or actively, we kind of um, discriminate, discriminate against these people, you know? They just say, like, I can't communicate with this person, but now my, my perception is a bit different. Not even a bit, it's very different now. I see them as, like, I'm aware that they are one of us. I'm very well aware that they are one of us. And then I should be able to communicate with them in this language. I don't see that as a disability, so to speak. It's just a language, a language and gap. And then this learning this um, sign language will help me to bridge that gap. So there won't be any form of discrimination or, um, I don't know the word now. There won't be any form of disparity between myself and the dumb I mean, the deaf community. So this is a very good way to go. My name is Samuel. Sign language for it is S on the shoulder. I am a sign language interpreter professionally. I'm the chairman association of sign language interpreters of Nigeria, Lagos State chapter. I am a dramatist. 
um, uh, curator of um, deaf dance. I a teacher, a director, a writer too. My name is Nafisa Olawumi Tijani. I am a sign language interpreter. I love teaching people how to sign. I love to communicate with devs. Uh, my name is Alalua Bayanli Emmanuel. I am a sign language interpreter. I am a special educator. I'm Bitirela Tishei. I'm a sign language interpreter, an early childhood educator, a specialist educator. Sign language, sign language, sign language chose me a long time ago, about more than uh, close to three decades, I must say, uh, close to 30 years now. That was around 2007 to 2008. My journey into sign language started from eight, nine years ago when I went to Federal College of Education Special Year. Yeah, and I've been signing since 2018, when I got to the school, the Federal College of Education Special Oyo. I started signing. I, I learned the words from my alphabets to other lessons. I had a friend. I had a friend because he is late now. May God rest uh, his dear soul. So he was the one that introduced me into the deaf community. We started as just friends pointing, doing this while we were still very young. So we play together, we move around together, but I noticed something that whenever is around a certain group of people, that is the deaf people, they, the way they move their hands is different from the way I and him, whenever we're communicating, the way we move our hands, it's different, very, very different. Theirs is more organized, more clear. So I decided that I uh, want to know about that particular one. So I poked him and I asked, what's this one? So he started with alphabets. I remember very vividly when he wrote on the dashboard when in front of, the, uh, of his uncle's car and he wrote on the dashboard A and signed the word A to me. So from there, from my first A, uh, multiple words, vocabularies in sign language, now sign language interpreter and several other things. We are here. So I started from there and I'm right here now. During my days in school, so that is when I learned um, sign language. And after which I continue to teach it to people. I actually went to Federal College of Education Special Oyo where I studied um, business education with an um, education with hearing impaired. So there, that is where I was first introduced to sign language because I, uh, in my own special area is education for, for the hearing impaired. So I learned sign language, I studied in school. Um, before then, I've been I've had probably um, just few interactions with deaf persons, but not so deep, and so I can't really comprehend, you know, what happened between us. But um, it eventually dawned on me, or everything came to light when I entered, or when I gained admission into the Federal College of Education Special Oyo. That was um, some years ago. So um, we. We have um, a double major course in that school, which is um, special education and your own course. So my course then was geography and special education. And so at the um, basic level, we are introduced to all the special areas because when you get to certain levels, you have to specialize in a particular um, one you've chosen. We have education, special education for persons with visual impairments, for persons with um, hearing impairments, 
for persons with intellectual disability and all others. So I, I think I just f fell in love with that area of hearing impairment. And to do very well in that department, you need to be able to communicate with them because we have a series of activities you need to do with persons who are deaf. We learn in the same classroom. We are all together. And then there's also a big assignment for all teachers, which is the teaching practice. In order to go and come successfully to a deaf school, teach in a deaf school, we need to be able to communicate within sign language. So when I got there, I met some few people who were using their hands to communicate. The fact that they cannot, they can see, they cannot see, and they cannot talk, and they can still communicate. So it amazes me. So I moved closer to them, and then I, I wanted to learn how they communicate without talking, and they can still communicate and pass information. So I, yeah, they taught me the basic knowledge of sign language as A, B, C, A to Z. And then from there, I started interpreting for them in class when they don't have interpreters to interpret for them in class. So I summoned the courage to interpret for them. And now, ever since then, since 2018, I've been signing till date. My own area of the interest, what I love most, is teaching the hearing how to sign. I love it because because I, my main focus is trying to break that communication barrier between the hearing and the hearing impaired. So I have been striving for a long time now to make sure that anyone I come in contact with, I will make sure that I teach that person one or two signs. So that when the person meets a deaf, they will be able to know how to communicate with that that person. Experience so far, you see, it's been blessed, I must say that, because sign language has helped me, sign language has um, taken me to places I cannot I don't think I can step into places I, I can never imagine myself being. Government house, inauguration, presidents, places, great places. I've uh, met people that I might not be able to meet if on an ordinary ground. But because of my profession, my sign language, I was able to meet them. Uh, and then, so they, it's, it's been lovely. It's been very, very lovely. I, I love the language and I love the people. So moving around, um, talking, helping out with interpretation, it's, it has led me to um, great, uh, great heights, really. So the experience are very good, but also, you know, as life is, it's ups and downs, but mostly ups and um, very, very good. So I'm, uh, I'm happy, I'm glad that I'm able to learn this great language and uh, have expand my experience in this community of the deaf. From my own experience here, when we started, they were like, oh, is this no wala like this? They were like, ah, uh -uh. I hope we will get this thing. I hope we understand at the end of the day. But first week, Second week, third week, fourth, I was like, ah, okay, but they are, they are not seeing it. Like, okay, so it's like this, so we can learn it. So it's just as simple as this. So for those people that we are training here now, when we started, they were like, ha, ah. they were, they were no much interaction like that. Do you understand? But as time goes on, they are developing more interest, they, becoming, they are becoming more participatory, they are even more eager and willing to learn. And when I say, okay, let's continue, okay, let's continue. And so they are showing more interest in it now. Sign language is the easiest language I've ever seen. It's very simple, very easy to learn. So what is that? It's just a language, it's just a way of just a way of communicating, a way of gesticulating. What is most important thing in sign language is the person that you are signing to to understand you. Once there is communication, there is understanding in the communication, you don't have a problem. 
plastic surgery. So since I became a sign language interpreter, the journey has been um, the journey has been so good. I won't say really smooth, but the journey has been um, let me say smooth. I can say smooth. Why? Because sign language is an art cake. So because if not for sign language, maybe I wouldn't be uh, where I am today. Maybe because um, equating all other options I have with sign language, I, I don't think I would have entered the rooms I've entered. I don't think I would have been able to speak to the people I've spoken to and um, so many other benefits that I've gotten from sign language. So I wouldn't say that it is that smooth because it's not a job that comes every day. It's um, a once in a while job. However, it has been so, uh, you know, so amazing being in this profession. So I, I, I somewhat enjoy sign language because I can not, I, if I feel not to talk, I can choose not to talk and then choose not to hear and then I will communicate with my deaf people. So it's very sweet. If, in fact, if you don't want other people to hear what you are saying, you can even anti communicate. So sign language is just so sweet and then it embraces the deaf community because without sign language, you cannot communicate. And then communication, communication is very key. Without communication, there's no information. So with the help of sign language, you communicate with the deaf community and they will feel alone because they are also humans. Or no state, but connecting life here in Ocean State. Uh, I'm a pharmacist by profession and I work with a book pharmacy here in Oshogo. Actually, I this is my first time being, you know, under the tutelage of uh, an organization like this regarding sign language, and it's you know, prompted my intelligence, my um desire to learn more about it and frankly speaking it has been an eye-opener it's very awesome beautiful facilitators whom have uh, devoted their time to us and the most important part of it is that the spirit is there the spirit will you not know, connect with the other uh, part of the world i would say because um being with deaf persons and then you know having to share with them and to communicate with them it's interesting it's very good it touches life it makes them happy it makes them to feel not loved so i really appreciate this organization for such um, uh, an, uh, an, an opportunity and also for delivering it to us free of charge you know with the sacrifice and having to put this I really recommend that anyone who has an opportunity to key in should really look into that. And also the government can come to us in that aspect to have it much more in a bigger way and in a better fashion. Thank you for your time. My name is Fatima Abuba Kadochi. Okay. I am from Jigawa State, but I reside in Abuja. I work with um, National Commission for Persons with Disability Planning and Research Department. I have six children. My second child is a deaf. And the experience, it's marvelous. I know a little bit of sign language, maybe alphabet, some numbers, but I have improved a lot. Thanks for the training. My name is uh, Mrs. Ade Kadabiri. I'm very grateful for this privilege. I only come across this um, sign language online when I was browsing. I am a retiree. I retired five years ago as a civil servant. So when I saw this program, I fall in love. Even the writing, alphabet to the extent that even myself and my granddaughter that is with me she, is, she can wow. even write it on her own in fact wow. she was she is with me now so when we yeah. talk about sign language she's always eager to be with me to learn so i really wow. thank people who have uh, improved when i see people writing saying uh, signing 
maybe on the telly, I'm already like it to interpret what they are saying. So, oh. and even me, though I'm not that perfect yet, but I yes. thank God. That's why I said I would like to continue if there is any plan B, another one. Oh. I'm yeah. State, but I'm based in Abuja. We are signed A to Z. Shaliwa. I train at a UBTH in here. So when I saw this, I saw it in a platform share. And we have a WhatsApp group, my classmates then. When I saw the program, I was very, very happy. And I joined. I think it has helped me a lot, open with everything I've learned before. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. My name is Okiri Franka. I'm joining from Lagos State. Oh, okay. I'm a teacher by profession. <laughs> I came across this group through my WhatsApp, one of my WhatsApp groups. And since I joined, though I have a little bit knowledge of it, but it has been long. I've almost forgotten everything I learned. But with the head of the group, I think I've been able to revive all the little things I've learned. And I have learned more, 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 more. And it's very, very interesting, very, very interesting. And I must say kudos to you all. And just like Olivia Sweet, please, we need more. I need more, more, more. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm I'm from Akwa Ibom State, or based in Port Harcourt. I work with an accounting firm. Um, about the program, I came across it through. It. She's actually an interpreter. Yeah, so she needs me up. I'm actually an interpreter, but I've forgotten most of it. So I'm actually grateful and thankful for this program because I've learned a lot. I've refreshed my of the things I learned before and um, I wouldn't mind if the program continues and if we can also like Musa said we can get the government to support and make it an elaborate program for others to share in what they had and be sure for others that everyone should chip in everyone should learn new things everyone should just join up and learn how to talk to the deaf make them part of life make them part of themselves Thank you very much. My name is Gina Zhuang Xiong. I'm, uh, I'm a skincare consultant, so I work with a beauty firm. Uh, but I, I'm currently in Water Country River State. I appreciate the facilitators of this program. I got to know of it through my friend who is also attending the, um, the program. And we're grateful for everything. I've learned, I've really learned um, how to interact with people that are deaf and um and dumb the special people and um i would love us to continue just like other persons have said let's continue so that we would gain perfection and we also bring them into the world of those that can speak and hear thank you Let's believe 
Working on this project with my teammate has been very eye-opening. It's been a wonderful project. I mean, but the most important thing is that we are actually, you know, bridging the gap between family members, between workers, between normal everyday citizens, so that communication can be a human right, just as it's supposed to be. Of August. 
So for other CSOs, I believe that we all do like similar work and we need these people in the kind of work that we do so that we can like um, not leave anybody out. So I, I, I will advise the CSU community, not just CSU community, I think the nation at large, even the education system, to probably like um, adopt this as a as a third major language, so to speak, just like we have English, we have um, French, we have other languages, we can adopt this as a major language where we are able to communicate to the deaf community effectively. So this is my advice to CSOs, other organizations, and Nigeria at large, to adopt this language as a very major and integral part of communication for effectiveness. My advice is this. Try as much as possible to go through this process because it's, it's just so amazing. It's amazing in the sense that you can do what so many people cannot do. So if you see this kind of opportunity, try and make good use of it. I must really, really appreciate sci-fi. Um, those that bring behind um, this great project, it's, uh, it's inclusive. It's a way to bring um, sign language to the populace. It's a way to make um, the world a better place. It's a very, very commendable um, job that has been done here, teaching everyone that has access to their phone how to sign, teaching everyone that can come down live to sign. We have eight weeks, we'll be having eight weeks of um, sign language, basic sign language classes by professional sign language interpreters. And having access to these great people is another thing entirely because you will be put we submerge into a new world. We have the deaf people coming around soon. It's a great plan. There's a great plan they have for the populace to be able to sign. Also, it's going to be a great benefit for the deaf people because now, after the classes, they can have more people to relate with. Sign language is a thing of um, rights. It is not of charity. I just want to learn for no. Um, the, the deaf people, it is their right to communicate in this language. It is their right to get information. And how do they get this information? It's through sign language. People signing to them, interactions, and um, sci-fi making this possible, and those supporting this great project. Wow, kudos to you. Thank you so much for making it, the world a better place once again. Well, it's been blessed. I really love the, um, the idea. So me, me being part of it fully, I, I just feel um, happy about it. Uh, of course, you know, naturally, um, basic sign teaching, people that have not even experienced what science is before, it's, 
it comes with its little little bit tiny little bit challenges but it's it's a good one uh, we teach we try as much as possible to carry them some will have to even hold their hands to form those words some will complain of the pains that that's initial pains you have when you start signing so it's been a, a beautiful time with um, the learners truly uh, there are some people i already know now by just seeing them often every week i see them and they do this with us and they, they are willing to learn i i feel so appreciated for them i thank them for this and really it's a it's been a, a joy for me to be part of this um, great um, project be part of to be a facilitator in this project thank you wow when i heard about this um, project i was like this is like what i intend doing i now see organizations trying to break it into limelight do you understand what you like doing and as the organization like okay it's like well, i i love sports now one organization now asked me to come and train people how to do sports you know you're like okay uh -uh, what i love doing already now wants me to to come and do it so i feel i feel okay this is a welcoming idea. We are trying to break the gap. We are trying to let people to understand that sign language is key. Not even for only deaf. You, as a person, you need to learn sign language. Yes, in family, every, you need to learn sign language. Not only I, have, I don't have deaf child, I don't have deaf friend, I can never become deaf who told you. Do you understand? As in a family, in a school, be it you're a doctor, everyone just needs to learn sign language so this program is in fact a top notch i i will encourage the organizer to please not stop here continue training and training and training of people so that at the end of the day before we see the next maybe next 10 years or the world sign language would have been something that anyone that says and we don't know it's not would not be a strange language again Okay, when we look at um, Nigeria, let me use um, Lagos State as, as a context in this interview. Um, without sign language, it might be difficult for us to properly mainstream persons who are hearing impaired or deaf into anything social, um, even education. Let's, let's, let's start from education because in schools, where we have persons who are deaf, I mean inclusive schools. We need a sign language interpreter in most um, senior schools to be able to interact, to be able to communicate what the teacher or lecturer is communicating to the deaf pupils. The same thing in the um, community. Wherever we have social events, wherever we have programs, wherever we have um, any kind of programs that involves the deaf persons or deaf people, they need or there is need to be a sign language or sign language interpreters there for them to be able to be carried along and that's what we call accessibility also on the um, let's come to television television station um, a lot of people don't read newspapers again all they want to see is you know the live um, videos they want to see what's going on live we now have some television stations that you know that brings that access accessibility to place when it comes to um, the deaf people or the deaf community, and it has been helping so far, so good. However, it's not enough. We still need uh, more more accessibility, more provision for persons who are deaf in the area of um, hospital. We have some hospitals that have sign language interpreters already. We need more sign language interpreters in schools. We need them on television stations, we need them for programs. We need them in um, all other sectors where we have um, where we have traffic because you never can tell there might be a deaf person in your audience or um, as uh, you might have them as a client. Okay, I so much love um, sign language. It's my passion and I teach people. So you, 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 you talk and you can hear, but you cannot talk to other people. It's, it's not so fine. 
as far as that we are all humans and then we have the ability to talk but some cannot talk some cannot hear so with that you can learn sign language it doesn't matter if you are hearing or deaf you can even have a deaf friend or deaf people in your relative how do you communicate with them or in case you have a deaf child or you have a deaf son how do you communicate how do you teach moral skills how do you teach the, 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 the boy value that's why you have to uh, you have to learn sign language sign language is not just for the uh, hearing people no it's it's for the deaf people that's their language and it's for it's for you as a hearing person as an added advantage as an added knowledge so i see no reasons why you should not learn sign language embrace sign language and be able to communicate with the deaf people in the community it's been an awesome ride um getting people to sign up to learn basic sign language and i as a person who is also part of the um, team members that organized this i have also been able to learn some basic sign language skills that i can i can use to sign whenever i come in contact with a deaf person in my community it was a very long journey but we're grateful to our partners we're grateful to Aslin, to what to ccd and also we are grateful to the carrington youth fellowship for the platform it's a big platform and we are not taking it for granted we're grateful to the united states consulate for this opportunity to learn it's a it's a learning process for us and it was a wonderful experience so we, we are not stopping with with what we've done so far it's a continuous project it's a continuous activity and i'm sure that um every one of us um, the team, the organizations, the civil society organizations, the government agency, um, sci-fi, the U.S. consulate, and all our partners will all continually work towards um, making sure that more people are aware about the need to learn sign language so that our society can be more inclusive. And my, my hope exactly is, is that the time, time is going to come where, where Everywhere you go to, that I mean, everywhere you go to, every parastatal of government, every government offices, every you know mall, every school, every hospital, every office, right, that you go to, you're going to have someone, at least one person, at every critical point of contact, right, with uh, that has uh, you know, you find someone who can you know use sign language and. You you can always interpret to them and you interpret you know what you know the, the, the needs of you know someone with uh, a hearing disability uh, uh, you, you know some of you inter, you know interpret and, and serve their needs effectively also uh, you know beyond that we hope that you know someday everybody as part of you know the skill that we learn in school and in our communities and you know in our families sign language will be one of the major 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 skills you know that will be prioritized for learning and i hope i'll be a part of that journey and i look forward to that future thank you very much <laughs>